All right, so the ego or the heart center, it is that little tiny triangle over kind of towards the right side of the chart. Wow, it's interesting, it's the smallest center in the graph, right? A lot of times we think of ego, what do we think of, right? It's negative, we gotta get back, you know, get rid of it, it's bad. And, you know, it's not something that is really good, right? It's, we don't like it, but actually the ego has a specific function. It is a place of energy. It's not a place of awareness. So ego in the healthy sense is here to help humanity. It's here to help us, right? It's here to help us hold families together, protect us. It's about navigating the material plane. It's about resources, all of that. So we do need the ego. A lot of times when we think of this negative ego, it's because the ego is being distorted. There are about 35% of people in the world that have this center defined and the rest of us, two thirds, uh, have it undefined. So when we see the defined ego, what that means is there's consistency in willpower, in the ability to use this energy to control resources, to build certain things, to market. I mean, there's a lot of things that go into this that can be very mundane. There is some mystical stuff to it as well, but that's really what it's for in order to help and protect all of us, right? So those that have the ego, well, you're feeling this pressure to prove yourself, right? because you do need to prove yourself. You have to prove that this energy that you're using, you're going to do what you say you're going to do. That's where these type of programs come from in the world. A lot of these societal programming, like I need to be sexier. I need to be better. I need to be a better lover. All of these like things that come with our society really come from the distortion of the ego. The 65% of us that don't have it defined, it means that we're here to learn about what ego is, what this heart center, this willpower is, and recognize, are we coming from those programs? Are we trying to prove ourselves, right? Is that what we're trying to do? Because it's a, a subconscious type of thing that you may not even realize that you're doing. This is all about worth, right? When we look at the ego, it, it's about worth. It's about value. And this is where all self-esteem issues really can stem from is I'm not good enough because, or I'm better because, right? So it's self-esteem can kind of go both ways. This is where hierarchies come from. And there are hierarchies on the planet and it is important for certain people to have certain roles. So we also have to accept that. The negative ego that most of the world thinks of though is when this ego energy is distorted and now rather than that person using that ego energy to, to provide and help, they might use that just for themselves and I'm better than you or I'm less than you can be both ways. So that's really what we have to look at and all of us have to kind of clear this up and have a healthy ego energy because it is here to, to work together. If it's undefined, you're not here to prove yourself or to be competitive. You're taking in all of this other ego energy from the world and all the programming. So you really need to, to look at that. Are you posturing? Are you making promises? Because a promise is saying, I will do something. You don't have consistent willpower. So that's not going to work for you. And this is how the cycle of feeling less than starts because we make a promise and then, oh God, here it comes and I can't fulfill it for whatever reason. So we make another promise out of fear that we're going to lose something. If they don't see my value, they're going to cut me off, right? That's kind of the distortion around it. And then this is where the self-worth cycle, oh, I'm not valuable. I have to compensate by going above and beyond, trying to prove things, burning myself out, and then feeling bad because I don't have the willpower to keep, keep it going, right? So this is where all of that can come from. If you don't feel like you're worth much or you have issues with that, it's probably just distortion because you don't have anything to prove. That's not what you're here for, okay? So a couple of questions here for the undefined egos. And like I was saying, First of all, don't make any promises. That should always be like a, um, an understanding for you. Say maybe, right? Or we'll, we'll try to do that, but I, I'm not sure, you know? People don't love that, by the way. Well, maybe yeah. we'll see. 
I know, I know. There's so much about like being decisive in this world. And most, more than half of us are not supposed to be, you know, with the emotional authority, right? As an example. But yeah, if it's in a healthy space, you know, you're at peace with not having to prove anything. That should be a relief. You can sense in and take in other people's egos. You know their motivations and any hidden agendas that they have. And if they're going to do what they say they're going to do, who can deliver? A lot of it, you know, is just learning about this nature of willpower. And that's why you have it undefined. So what does it feel like when it comes in? What do you feel like when you're around these certain people? And, you know, maybe when you're around them, you feel like you can take on the world and do all these things. And then when they leave and now you don't have that energy available, are you getting frustrated? Are you getting angry? Right? Are you feeling bitter? Whatever the case may be, because that energy when you're with them, it might not be yours. So the not self of this for undefined, right? I have to pump myself up so I feel worthy and good about myself and then others will see my value. That's distortion. I have to be loyal so that others will see how valuable I am and so that I can prove to myself how valuable I am. Well, if I just tell it like it is and make them this promise, then they will see how wonderful I am. If I show them how trustworthy I am, then they will like me. They think I can do this, so I better prove to them that I can do it. If I am in control, then I can prove my worth. If I'm a good wife, lover, friend, son, daughter, mother, or father, or I'm not a good wife, love, lover, friend, son, daughter, mother, or father, unless I prove it. It's not true. So you want to ask yourself, do I feel and think like I have something to prove? Do I make promises? And do I value myself, right? Not based on what other people value you. And I can tell you a lot of us that have it undefined because most of us do, especially coaches and people that are starting out doing their work, there may be a tendency to accept less, to charge less for your services, even though you're the type of person that will go above and beyond, right? So really it's about learning that your worth is not determined by other people or, okay, well, this is how much they're charging. So I'm going to do that or whatever the case is and, and not being afraid to, to claim your worth and ask for more, ask for help too. You might not ask for help. That's mm -hmm. another tendency with this one. Yeah. I was just looking at that. Um, mm -hmm. So many, you know, I have, mm -hmm. have it open my family, my clients, my, I think I came across two one or two that it was defined and that's definitely an issue about proving worth because it's like yes. it was we our whole retreat was based on on that just um being able to receive not because we had to prove something mm -hmm. exactly and then for those of you that have it defined right the healthy way to use this is that you have a consistent willpower you do what you say you're going to do but don't expect other people to do that right because sometimes with the defined ego it's like a double-edged sword. It's like you have a gift and, and this, um, you know, motor, this energy that's available to you, but you know, there, there may be some sort of distortion around expecting other people to, to be how you are. Right. Uh, most people are not going to be able to do what they say they're going to do. And it doesn't mean that they're less or anything like that. But the other thing too, with this, if it's defined, you have to really maintain your balance of work and rest because if you just keep pushing and pushing with this motor, it's going to affect the body. And for most of us, it is not the authority, right? So if you're making ego-based decisions, if, especially if it's defined, you, know, you could really burn yourself out. So you need to rest more. Um, the unhealthy way of it being defined is like pumping up egos and then expecting other people to, to be how you are, being forceful being very egoic, like I said, the better than or less than. It's really more about you seeing yourself as like, okay, I have this ability and I can do this in order to protect and serve and help rather than anything else. No no judgments and, and things like that. I'm curious about the person who does have the defined ego, who is dependable and does what they say they're going to do if people don't become really dependent on them doing that and just curious if that's because yeah. they're, they're the person they can depend on. Yeah. So those people that have the ego energy and are doing what they say they're going to do, hopefully they entered into that correctly with their strategy and authority. 
Otherwise we get all these weird distortions and like divorce and family stuff. And like, because it's like, maybe they're trying to pump up and like, yeah, look at all this stuff I can do for you. But then it can build resentment or um, they burn out of energy. So it is depending on how you enter. And hopefully it was your strategy and authority that got you there.